We are now going to cross over to the Pan-African Parliament where our colleague foreign editor Sophie Mukwena is standing by. Sophie, it's over to you. Well, Nampu, yes, indeed, we are here at the Pan-African Parliament. As you saw earlier on, the president of Ghana, President Ado, uh, addressing the Pan-African Parliament, talking about the importance of uh, uh, all member countries of the African Union uh, to work together, but also saying that uh, as a person who participated in the formation of the African Parliament, he does believe that uh, Pan-African Parliament must be given uh, legislative powers so that they can be able to do oversight on the continent. And we had the Minister of International Relations from South Africa also talking about that, but also weighing in on international issues, emphasizing a support for Palestine and uh, Western Sahara, but uh, a heart-hitting message also from the Speaker of the South African Parliament, Metandi Mudise, on the issues that are related to the Pan-African Parliament. As a former member of the Pan-African Parliament, the big issue that I spoke about earlier on this morning of the divisions according to the regions and the issue of the language barrier, Francophony, Anglophony, which leads to the divisions within the Pan-African Parliament. But at the moment I have with me the leader of the uh, Economic Freedom Fighters, Julius Malema, who is a member, a full member of the Pan-African Parliament, but also a member of the South African Parliament. Uh, when the last session uh, was underway, where I attended and uh, covered, he was very forthright, hard hitting on his observations on the functioning of the Pan-African Parliament. Malema Khotso. The Pan-African Parliament, there has been a contestation, Mr. Malema, on the powers and the function of the Pan-African Parliament, but also whether it is effective enough to deal with issues of governance on the continent. Well, uh, that's what uh, we are calling for as a Pan-African Parliament that we must have legislative powers, we must have the capacity to play an oversight role on the executives in the continent, hold them accountable, and uh, we can only do that if uh, countries uh, ratify the protocols which will allow uh, this parliament to become a fully legislative continental body uh, which will hold the executive accountable. A lot of presidents are uncomfortable with that because uh, they do not accept being held uh, accountable. And those are some of the people who thrive on violation of human rights, dictatorship, and stealing the government money and resources of the countries without being held uh, accountable. They do that with impunity because they know that uh, they control and run those countries as if they are personal uh, uh, properties. But with a continental body like PAP being given legislative powers to hold executives accountable, they will no longer be in a position to do all these shenanigans they are able to get away with now. The Pan-African Parliament itself, it's divided. The last session, when you were fighting, particularly with the president of the Pan-African Parliament on issues of accountability and budgets, how are you going to ensure this time around with the new incoming president things are done differently? Well, we must strengthen our rules. The first thing that we need to do and uh, which the Speaker of our Parliament spoke about is a rotational principle where leadership of PAP, especially the president of PAP, must rotate all regions. In that way we are able to unite uh, the continent and we will make sure that all regions feel represented like the AU does. And then we must make sure that resources that are utilized here in PAP, people are account for them. And that's what we need to do with the election of the new leadership. Elect leadership that will be held accountable and make sure we strengthen the rules and make sure that the hosting country, South Africa too, is able to challenge the, the bureau and hold the bureau accountable because we are the biggest contributor financial. Uh, to this institution and therefore we cannot spend monies of South Africans without holding 
uh, the Bureau accountable on how they are utilizing the resources that we share with them as a, as a, as a country. The issue of uh, uh, divisions amongst Africans themselves, the issue of xenophobia, when you monitor and listen and watch the body language of the Pan-African Parliament members from other countries, you can see that uh, they are not so comfortable. How do we deal with that as a continent, not blaming South Africa? Because the issue of divisions and also xenophobia and other forms of intolerance are not only a problem for South Africa. All the countries have traveled on the continent, the regions in particular. There's this problem of the divisions. Well, uh, it's a colonial legacy. It is something that uh, uh, we should speak to, and I'm happy that all the speakers have dealt with that point. Uh, we should confront it. Uh, the issue of francophones and the anglophones always plays uh, its uh, role, ugly role, particularly when it comes to issues of leadership. Uh, so we are going to deal with it here. We have started speaking about it. We are, we are confronting it. We should make sure that that issue is dealt with. The issue of xenophobia, it's a problem where we contest uh, limited uh, resources and we think that uh, people who come from other countries are here to steal from us. Uh, and it's not only in South Africa, it's everywhere uh, in, the, in the continent. So that issue will be resolved. But Does it speak to the leadership failure? We, we failed successfully because uh, we need to unite the continent. And for as long as we still see each other through the eyes of the borders that are imposed on us by colonizers, there will never be unity. The first thing we need to do is free movement of persons in Africa. It shouldn't be that for me to travel from South Africa to another co country in Africa, I should be having some form of visa, uh, which is required when you go to Nigeria. It must be easy uh, for me to travel the continent without any difficulty to appreciate the continent and appreciate each other. But how do you address how do you address the issue of crime and those citizens of the continent who are not willing to respect the rules on the regulations of the country that perhaps one is visiting? No, the, the, the rules must apply and the rules and the crime have got nothing to do with xenophobia. So Xenophobia is a phenomenon that needs to be dealt with separately and crime is a phenomenon that we need to deal with decisively irrespective of nationality. Whether you're committing crime as a South African or a Nigerian or Zimbabwean, it, it matters not. Your nationality is not of importance. What, what is important is a crime being dealt with decisively without looking at who comes from where, whether black or white, Indian or colored, whether Zimbabwean or South African, let's deal with crime as a problem. Let's deal with xenophobia as a problem. We need to unite the continent. The only way the Europeans have done it successfully, and that's why they are able to act as a united force, because they've done away with the borders. There is free movement of goods and persons amongst themselves. We can do it ourselves. That will be the beginning of uniting the Africans and doing away with uh, xenophobic problems. These xenophobic problems are caused by the borders because we still see each other through the eye of colonial borders imposed on us as Africans. I would have failed in my duties if I don't locate the role and the accountability of the Pan-African Parliament, the AU, to our own situation as a country, the South African Parliament. Yes. Difficult information coming from the state capture saying you as parliamentarians have failed to hold the executive accountable. That is why we are where we are. Now how can you as parliamentarians of South Africa be here and hope that you can say to Africa, let us be accountable, let's deal with corruption. Have you failed in your duties to hold the executive accountable to an extent that right now what's coming out from state capture is so bad? The ANC members of parliament have failed. Everybody knows in South Africa that we have held the executive accountable. We have gone extra mile, did unusual things in that parliament, tried to instill teeth in that parliament to bite this corrupt executive. So it we must not be painted with the same branch. We, we have done everything, including the commission you are talking about. 
We established that commission. It was not established by the ANC. The ANC was refusing that commission to be established. That commission was established because of the efforts of the EFF, which ended up in court, demanding that this commission must be uh, established so that we can continue to hold the corrupt uh, accountable. We are the ones who stood up to the president in parliament, to the ministers in parliament. We still do the same today. There is the most useless minister called Pravin Godan, who is untouchable, and we are doing everything in our power to try and hold him accountable. They use their majority to undermine accountability. So it must not be that generally everyone uh, has failed in that parliament. That's why we were shocked. We were not called uh, as the EFF uh, into the state capture uh, co inquiry because uh, the party that has held this executive accountable, the president accountable, the party that has pushed parliament to do the right thing is the EFF. If you go and look at the legal cases that are there, it's EFF versus the speaker of parliament because the speaker of parliament was trying to use parliament to further the party's interest, and we refused that. So we bring with us that type of an experience into this Pan-African Parliament where the Bureau will be held accountable, where we'll encourage a lot of member states to ratify the protocols so that this becomes a full legislative body which will hold the executives accountable. Thank you for your time, Mr. Malema. Thank you. That was the EFF leader, Julius Malema, talking to us here from the Pan-African Parliament in Midrand. You know that uh, uh, he is a fully uh, fleshed member of the Pan-African Parliament and uh, him saying that they are going to ensure that uh, what they do in the South African Parliament in terms of trying to hold the executive accountable, they will continue here. I must say I spoke to the NCOP chair earlier on. I'm sure you'll hear that interview very soon uh, where I asked him the same question that uh, as the representatives of uh, people in South Africa, but also at the continental level here at the Pan-African Parliament, how are they going to convince Africans on the continent when there are perceptions and views that coming out from the state capture that uh, they have failed to hold the executive accountable, that Demerson was saying that uh, uh, those who failed, even including members of parliament, must be accountable to whatever they have done and they must really face consequences and therefore let's wait and see when the state capture finally wraps up its work whether the recommendation will speak to MPs who are supposed to be real representatives of the people at the national level and also at the continental level to hold the executive on the continent and in their respective countries accountable. Back to you, Numbu.